I think God chose this day. I'm a native of Japan. I was born in Tokyo in a family, good family. I grew up as a non-Catholic, non-Christian. My father was an engineer and became a professor of university and taught engineering. So that he was very different from me in many ways. Probably he had difficulty understanding what I do to the art is a bit more non-practical for him. My mother was housewife, good parents, but re they didn't really have any religious belief. When I remember my childhood, there was a time for search for something bigger than ourselves. So I grew up in that environment, searching for something, 
something spiritual too. Searching where I came from, where I go, uh, what is love and what is the purpose of this life. Because anyway, we all human are spiritual and I was also. And actually I think many artists who grew up in a secular society, they tend to have this thirst to the supernatural life and spiritual life. I often see this, and I was one of, it, one of them. I did a theater and film before I focused on art because that was also what uh, my father wanted. It was difficult for him and back then for me to Im uh, imagine a career in art. So I chose uh, the other industry that seemed more practical. And then I uh, decided to focus on art as that was uh, what I liked since uh, I was a child and okay I r like Renaissance art I like classical art so I decided to go to Florence to study Renaissance art that's where many things happened unexpectedly that's where I converted to Catholicism and I was baptized in 2010. My background, artistic background, is mainly from a Russian Academy of Art in Florence. That goes back to 19th century Russian realism. That's my main education in painting and drawing. And later I studied with uh, Imao Kun in Taiwan. He is a master painter in realism a master painter in color, his color is amazing. And while I studied uh, religious art, I didn't know that was religious art. That was beautiful art to me. It was harmonious and beautiful. I didn't really know about those subject matters, but I, little by little I started to see something behind. What ha happened to me was that I was seeing all those beautiful works and that attracted me before even I knew the gospel, what it represented in those pictures. I was trying to paint like Raffaello and Michelangelo. So it was my artistic interest to study them. Mm -hmm. But I realized those beauty come from spirituality behind. Mm -hmm. It was not just a technique, artistic technique. So when I realized that, oh, maybe that was what I was looking for. So when I realized that there is something behind that rendered the artworks beautiful, I start to look into it. It was interesting, I read, I would say, I read the paintings of Renaissance and Baroque, like uh, illiterate of the Middle Ages. I was reading painting first, before I actually read the Gospel. So, I approached uh, gospel in a very, very visual way at the beginning, and still so, and it will be so. That experience kind of confirmed that beauty is visual version of truth, and I was attracted to truth, the image of merciful Father which Jesus brought to us without even knowing the content of the gospel because uh, we all I, I felt it was intuitive I felt that the beauty of it 
and that was the first time actually I encountered uh, probably the Lord, probably the Lord of mercy, God of mercy, which attracted me. That's the conversion start to take place. Conversion not from one religion to other, but the conversion of my heart. It was all providential and it's amazing how God led me to arrive because when I went to Italy, I didn't think about religious conversion. And then when I converted also, I mean, it was a great thing, but it was not the path I was planning. I was studying art. That was the main path I was taking. In 2008, I arrived in Florence, and 2010, I was baptized. And since then, I, yes, uh, it has been eight years since my conversion. I can say it was the greatest gift I ever had uh, in my life. And that changed the whole view, how I see the world, how I see, relate to others, how I see suffering, that the something that changed the most. Suffering became something po positive. I would say suffering start to have this idea for the first time that uh, suffering never takes away hope, which was uh, something new to me. Suffering was suffering better to avoid it and be with something positive always and that was uh, my idea before. I finished my academic study in 2014 from the Russian Academy of Art. I started teaching in Flor uh, Sacred Art School in Florence in 2013 and I worked there for four years. I opened my studio uh, La Bottega de Arte Sacra, La Pietra Scartata, in 2017. That's where I uh, give my private lessons to students. I did a prodigal son in jeans. That was a uh, something I painted from my experience of my conversion. Sorrowful Mother in Hope, which I did last year. Unexpected Feast, Judas Kiss, and so on. And Annunciation for sure. Sorrowful Mother in Hope, it's Virgin Mary in the sky stopped with the sword and contemplating on the kingdom of heaven with a background of uh, clouds of atomic bomb which fell in Nagasaki and there is a light of hope behind the painting. This is not a political painting. My intention was very different. It was inspired by the book Bell of Nagasaki written by Takashi Nagai. He lost daughters and his wife in the atomic bomb and he also died uh, five years after because of the radiation. And during the, these five years he wrote many books and he talks about uh, strength of faith to rebuild a city from nothing. And also he talks about forgiveness and this inspired me to do this so down in the painting there is a rain of blood actually it rained after the bombing because it was so hot so it rained it was not red I so I turned into red to, symbolically and then is to say when we contemplating on the kingdom of heaven we can forgive it's not matter of uh, which nation on the earth did what thing which we often talk about only way to forgive 
is to see the kingdom of God and which is gives hope to us because war in national level is one thing but and we also have a similar thing in the, our daily life too between friends between also in the family only way to forgive completely from heart is contemplating on the kingdom of heaven suffering and resurrection of uh, Jesus Christ so this painting was also for me it was like a prayer and it was uh, very beautiful unexpected feast I was asked to paint this subject by the friar Franciscan friar I know and he liked this uh, story of Saint Francis his friar and him and other friars were fasting they fasted long but before completing one of the friar couldn't continue he wanted to eat so he got up in, at night Saint Francis saw him suffering because he couldn't continue his fasting uh, Saint Francis got closer he actually brought a bread to give it to him it's a, he he was a merciful he was not like the head the boss who punishes others he was like others and then uh, surprisingly you know, he ate uh, bread before he gave that bread to the friar so he broke his fast too to have communion with the brother because he did a good he fasted enough and he talked about this uh, in front of other friars as an example of communion with with the uh, brothers fast is not for its own sake but for charity that's why I titled unexpected feast the friar who received the bread was in joy in Judah's kiss this is also scene of betrayal but the gaze of Jesus is towards us and that's merciful even at the moment of betrayal there is uh, always something I looked for in those paintings which is the mercy of God that is the main theme I find most of my painting depicts why I do sacred art now I mean if you see the market of art sacred art is small percentage there is some kind of mission I want to do and that is gospel is present today too it's not something that happened 2000 years ago and now it's gone in our everyday life we see gospel in the case of uh, this uh, sorrowful mother in hope which we can see in the light of the gospel Mary contemplating on the mercy of God confronting the tragedy in our human history So I think God chose this date because when I booked uh, my flight to Taipei to work on the niche I didn't know this year we have Annunciation a week after the Easter usually it's 25th of March because uh, this year the 25th of March was Palm Sunday that's why the day of Feast of the Annunciation was transferred to 
8th of April. If that wasn't the case, I could not complete the Annunciation. We had a time to complete our works because of this change. So it's uh, providential in, in many ways. It took me two months and a half to paint. Besides sketches, sketches I had done uh, half a year ago, and I left it for half a year, and retook the sketch and re uh, started working on a bigger scale, first in drawing, and then on the canvas. That's for painting, and this painting has a niche around it, and that took us one month to complete. The reason is this. First, uh, the name of the church is Our Lady of Sunshine Catholic Church. So Mary is very important in this specific church. And the second is that it's important scene of the gospel where God in, came into the world. The thing is, we, we don't have Jesus in the painting, but Jesus is there. Jesus is always the fine, final goal for us. And she just conceived Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is not there, but below the painting it's written. This painting is made to evangelize people who has not known the Jesus yet. Seeing the percentage of a Catholic population or Christian population in Taiwan, many people has not have chance to get to know Jesus. My hope is that in this uh, talk to somebody who happened to be there, who just passed by and saw the image and, wow, that's uh, beautiful. What's this? What's this lady? What's this uh, flying man? That's the start. That was the start for me. It's telling story of Jesus. So it's in this way uh, I participate in uh, spreading this beautiful good news uh, of the Lord. Yes, I, when I paint, inspiration comes from God. If I do something I can do, it's very limited. And if I do something I cannot do, 
with the help of God and prayers, I hope beauty will uh, appear on the canvas. Every day before I paint, I pray and ask for even a practical solution in my painting. How can I represent Virgin Mary? What gesture can I have? Especially when I made my first sketch, maybe first hours I didn't draw nor paint. I contemplated and entered into the scene, tried to feel also what's within the character, how the life is, was like for Mary, and what she was doing when Gabriel entered. First of all, I, I need to experience the scene because art and beauty gives you experience and I'm creating artwork with painting but also I'm, I'm experiencing the scene as a viewer before anybody else. There are a lot of uh, time for contemplation. It's uh, such a journey. It's led by prayers. So I really depends on God's help. It becomes more specific when I paint one scene. First, I see something I see, but to represent a scene, there is something which I need to represent and, it, and I didn't see. I see it as a, a deepening. There is a moment in the production, usually in the middle, I struggle. I don't find a solution. I enter into the phase in which my initial idea didn't capture. And that's the moment I need to go deeper, also in faith, to find what I looked for and what I didn't find at the beginning. So it gives me an opportunity to deepen my faith too. How Mary was like, what was her gaze like. They are very specific and they are visible representation of her invisible soul. When I paint one subject spending two months or three months in front of it. I pray and I immerse myself in the scene to contemplate on it and contemplate above all the mercy of the Lord and the beauty God created. So for me it's like writing a prayer with a brush and colors. So yeah, every painting I do is different, as every subject is different, and time I paint is different. So I have, as every day is different, it's always uh, fresh. This painting was unique in a way that location was set already, and there was a purpose of the painting. This painting was located outside the church, and there was a specific viewpoint a father wanted that was from the main street not right in front of the painting but from the left so I composed this painting with this limitation and this limitation guided uh, my composition what I mean is that Angel Gabriel in the painting is left and it's very tall and big and Mary is kneeling on the on the right so there's this almost like perspective effect from the left to right and beyond it you find the entrance of the church so this painting was an invitation to the church in an abstract sense this painting is probably 
the biggest project I did in a way the painting was big and also the there was niche construction involved but it, it's not about the dimension it was about the content it was about the experience I had and prayer goes together with the painting when God enters in creation he does amazing thing and this in this project I really experienced his power so I tried to invite him in my creation it was uh, such an adventure first there was a need to protect the painting from humidity and heat that's a practical aspect of it and then we as a designer I wanted to have uh, a niche that's like a house of Mary in a way symbolically of course I didn't make the whole house of it but Mary became the house of the Lord and then this niche was like a house for Mary so I wanted to have something beautiful and humble and heartful humble because she was not a uh, queen of the country she was a humble girl who prayed and God chose that little girl to be a mother of God first I came up with a elaborated design to show not necessarily for beauty of its own sake but to show care for the mother of God for Mary I wanted to represent spiritual richness in physical form so I made a elaborated design also I live in Italy and I saw so many beautiful architectures uh, and those inspired me to make this niche but I realized uh, those Roman architectural elements I used a lot in my first draft was often used uh, for luxury apartment here not necessarily for churches actually churches has less these ornamental elements and I realized if I use elaborated design for the niche that might convey a different message maybe richness of the church which is not uh, true and which is not something I wanted to communicate it was representation of a spiritual richness which I wanted to convey so I when I realized this I changed the design simplified it and took elements from uh, pre-existing architecture to match with it so I came up with it, this design there is no particular message of mine this is a testimony to the gospel and my intention is to show the sense of revelation which we have in the gospel I think the painting shows emotional aspect of a uh, gospel art gives uh, a experience to the viewer which is spiritual experience that means it intercedes our prayers it makes us see what we don't see that's the beauty of art and that's what we what I want to give to the viewer for believers and non-believers alike and for non-believers that should uh, be something not just eye-catching but also heart-catching like uh, I was when I converted because that the mystery which is available to everybody and not known to everybody for believers I hope it helps for them to 
immerse themselves in, in the scene. When we picture uh, a gospel, it's so rich, and there are not, it's not just facts, of course. There is a soul, heart, mind, all present. Chido 在那个教堂在那个教堂有美丽的一书一书平为了我们的教堂越来越美丽这样子可以越来越帮助我们更多的人真是牵住的爱牵住的美丽所以我真谢谢我三木的这样的帮助我们的付传我已经说放几个会的一个教堂在桃园I think that this painting I did for the Sunshine Church is for everybody. It's invitation. And anybody who felt by this painting should not have a, any hesitation to go into the church. That was my case. I didn't know what those beautiful painting I saw was about, but I was attracted. And then I entered into the church. So the door of entrance right next to it. So please come in. <laughs> <laughs>